Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, recently, I'll get right down to the to the story here. Uh, was taking this out uh, out to dinner and noticed that the AC is about 96 degrees outside. Uh, AC never gave me any problems in this truck ever since I've had it. All of a sudden, just started blowing hot air. Um, I was at a stoplight. I turned the uh, the AC off and then on again with the switch right here, trying to see if I could hear the compressor cycle. I don't think I had heard it. Um, and it was just hot all the way to my destination. Uh, got to dinner, sat down, ate, hour and a half goes by, get back in the truck, turn it on, bingo, have cold AC again for about five minutes, then hot. Uh, ever since that second time that it worked, always hot air after that. So, got the truck home, uh, decided to do some diagnostics on it and I want to show you what I found and show you the solution to this common problem on these Hondas. Uh, you'll notice here uh, that I got a set of gauges. This is my manifold uh, pressure testing gauge set. You don't necessarily have to have one of these but this is kind of where I started until I did some digging and found the problem. Um, basically uh, the symptom was you hook both sides up, uh, you turn the AC on, all you do is get a static pressure reading of about 115 on both sides, meaning that this would read uh, right around 115 static, this would read right around 115 static. So they would both show equalization, which is basically just static pressure. It means absolutely nothing. Um, to get an accurate uh, Freon reading um, with a 134A system, this compressor has to be running. So at that point, I stopped and I started digging. Here is the problem. Right here in the fuse panel, you're going to notice that's right underneath, right in here on the left side of the engine bay. You take this cover, so it's going to look like that. You take this cover off. If you look inside of here, you're going to see right there, it looks like a little icicle. That relay, which mine are pulled for demonstration purposes, here they are. That relay looks like this. This relay would sit in here, the other sits in here. Now, a word about relays. This relay is your information control center on your dashboard, so as soon as this fails, or in my test case, I replace the bad relay with the good one, the good one with the bad one, you're going to throw some lights on on your dash, so don't freak out. Basically what I did was, I pulled this relay out, and upon removing it, you notice you can hear it, something's broken loose in there. So I took this, I place it in here, I take this relay out of here, I put it in here, plug those in, start the truck up. Here's our temperature to start with. AC compressor has kicked on before it was not kicking on. And we should get a reading right around 50 degrees. 58 degrees, 57 degrees is what it should read. Right now it's at 60 and dropping. Digital thermostat on the uh, AC control unit in the vehicle says that automatic low is 57 degrees. Right now we're getting approximately 55 degrees. It's exactly what it should be. So that really is the most simple, cheapest, easy to understand fix that I've ever seen for an AC system. A simple relay that is actually made in the USA has failed at 90,000 miles and caused a problem with the air conditioning. Now, you'll notice since we are in operation, our pressures will hover around 180, 190. They'll come up around 200. It'll fall back down again. It'll kind of stay right around that 200 uh, pounds of pressure mark. And then on your low side, you're going to hover right around between 14 and 17, at, le at least on my system. Um, this is what kind of goes on here. So 
just to give you an, also an idea, your blue is your low side, your red is your high side. You follow your red line down, your red line connects to your high side pressure port. Your blue line connects to your low side. This is also the side you would charge Freon on if you are low. So, you got an AC system that's just not working in your Honda. Your uh, compressor's not turning on. Go ahead and pull your relay out and swap it and make sure that that's not the problem because I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, that's going to be it. You can go to rockauto.com, it's five bucks for the relay, about two bucks for shipping. I suggest you buy two of them, throw one in your toolbox in case it fails again. I am in Florida here, so the sun beating down on the hood definitely takes its toll on any electrical that's up here in the front. So I hope this video helps anybody else out. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks. Okay, here's a look at these relays here in detail. They are identical. They are small. And they are made in the USA, which is interesting. But this is a very common problem with these relays. Both read the same part number, 0746A11E. Both are made in the USA. Both do the exact same thing. Um, a good rule of thumb in the way I am able to test and see which one is bad is if I take one of these and I just shake it. Hear that? You can hear something rattling around in there like a little ball or a little contact that's come loose. This one? No problem. So just another little rule of thumb. This is what they look like. Get yourself a couple of them. They're only about five bucks in Rock Auto.